well at Mont Ventoux, which is arguably one of the most famous summit finishes of all the Tour de France stages that you can get. And it's still a hell of a long way off in the distance up there. Got to ride two thirds of the way around the mountain first just to get to the start of the climb. Just left Bedouin at the start of the ascent of Mont Ventoux. 22 kilometers. Didn't say what the average gradient is, but according to the sign, the steepest one kilometer gradient is 23%, which I certainly hope is not the case because that's ridiculously steep. So, three main routes up Mont Ventoux. Okay, there's the, there's the first one that I already passed, the easy one. This is the middle of the three, and then there's one much further, further around to the um, southeast. So this is kind of the southwest ridge, there's a southeast ridge and then the west ridge on the way down. So the two on the south side are definitely much harder than the one on the west. And they join together at Chalet Renard for the final few kilometres, which is the famous section that famous section that gets all the coverage on TV. Yeah, it's gonna be a long old 22 kilometres. Okay, so the route hasn't actually really started climbing yet. This is a bit of a false start these first few kilometers, which obviously just means that there's more steepness to go than I hope to get. Okay, so now I feel like we've started climbing, maybe three kilometers in, and I'm in the granny ring for the first time all day. I've got pretty huge gears as well. I feel more like a mountain climb now. Starting to see the graffiti on the road as well. This is Chalet Renard, where the two roads on the south side of the mountain join up. So it's just one way to the top now. There she is, the giant of Provence, also known as the Bold Mountain. So apparently the tree cover used to extend to the summit of Mont Ventoux, but at some point in the recent prehistory or early historic times, it was deforested. It was deforested, which resulted in desertification, loss of soil, loss of habitat, and the trees never grew back at the top, which is why it now has its distinctive bold summit. Indeed, from a distance it looks like it has a perennial snow cap, but it's just the colour of the creamy white limestone summit, which is all scree like this.
like being on the moon. Just a lot more cars. This is the memorial to Tom Simpson, one of the early greats of British cycling, who collapsed and died here in a stage of the Tour de France in 1967. Only a kilometre or so from the summit. That's the summit of Mont Ventoux, the natural habitat of the rare spotted mammal. No idea how long the climb took, because I didn't really pay attention to the time, time at the start, but it's one hell of a climb anyway. I'm guessing it took something like three hours, maybe, maybe more. It's a bit different to the big climbs I've done in the Alps, which tend to be dominated by endless hairpins and switchbacks, where that was a lot more just kind of constant straightish drag at 8, 9, 10% gradient the whole way. So actually a lot harder than doing some of the big climbs in the Alps that I've done just because you don't get that little bit of rest at the hairpin. But now for 25 kilometres of constant downhill.